All right, footy's back. Welcome to AFLW today as we are here to review round one of the AFLW. An awesome, awesome weekend of footy. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly. As always, I'm joined by someone who is going through their third jacket for this season. Didn't wear it on on Sunday because they were rope climbing somewhere in Victoria. It's Bryony Dawson. <laughs> Thank you very much. I love that you noticed my jackets. I thought this one might be a bit too loud. Can yeah. you hear that? Oh, I can. Hopefully, Gerald can uh, mute that one out. It looks like you're ready to go ride a motorcycle or something. I Are do you in a gang? I'm always prepared to ride a motorcycle. Okay? <laughs> you do give off that vibe. The you're pretty cool. Yeah. I'll give you that. Uh, more importantly... Fresh off a big win in the showdown this weekend is our soon-to-be new bre- best friend, sucked into my lovely girlfriend, Stephanie, because Jess Waterhouse is coming on the show today. They're absolutely amazing. Cannot wait. The mullet. I love it. One of, great hang, great times, that interview coming up. But before we get started, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow AFL Today on your podcast networks, AFLW Today across all of our social medias and on X, it's AFLW Today AU. We've got chip ratings. Razor Ray was hanging out over the weekend. Our interviews are coming up and, of course, little highlights and snippets that we have throughout the weekend. But more importantly, can you smell it? Because footy's back. Footy was back and with a vengeance too. God, it was good. I was so excited just that, you know, we'd done a couple of eps. No footies had been kicked and I was just like, let's get into this. And didn't we get like an incredible uh, couple of openers on on Friday night? And it's, there's a lot to go through, Alex. There's a lot. So on this review show, we will do it differently to what we do AFL today on the men's side of things. So what we're going to do is we are still going to go through game by game, but every team gets two minutes. That's it. So we don't get stuck talking about how good... Well, on the men's show, Jim gets stuck talking about Patrick Cripps. I talk about Errol Gould. Here I might get stuck talking about Chloe Malloy and Brian. I don't know what you're going to talk about after the weekend because Essendon were horrific. <sighs> there we go. Uh, so anyway, we'll just talk about how the fan bases are feeling and so on and so. But first of all, we're going to start out with a quick look, quick look and ladder check. Then we'll get to the interview with Jess before we get into the two minutes on every team. So the quick look. How good's footy? How, it's back. How good is footy? That was so. It was so good. And you know, our group chat was absolutely lighting up uh, in the Sydney Collingwood game uh, on Friday night. So it was a very, very good round of football. Couple of surprises too, uh, and a couple of teams really stepping up and giving us the surprise that we wanted. Alex. A couple of teams also proving us very wrong very quickly. But more importantly, <laughs> the Biff. There was Biff on the weekend, and it was awesome. It was. You know, I'm not a violent person. I I don't like. I don't avoid conflict totally. Yeah. But I'm just not a violent person. But God, I love it when there's Biff on the footy field, (laughs) and especially in women's footy, because women aren't generally like allowed to be like physical. Yeah, you know what I mean? And they just like really got into it. And I loved it. It started off in the Sydney and Collingwood game where Maddie Collier was taken out with a late bump. The ball ends up in Chloe Malloy's hands and her opponent acts, just slides into her and collects herself, knocks herself out, starts a bit of an all-in brawl for 30 seconds. I was like, this is great. At two points, at two points yeah. in the field. And I was like, oh, footy's back. And then Dakota Davidson just decided to absolutely destroy Vicky Wall, who did sling tackle someone after the siren. But it was like, oh, I wouldn't want to annoy Dakota Davidson. Absolutely not. You wouldn't want to annoy Dakota Davidson at all. But I wasn't sure if Vicky Wall like heard the siren. There no. was talks, you know, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you're very into the game and you don't hear it. But, um, yeah, really, it really started something. And, mm. and and there was just a – there was like a little sprinkling of it throughout yeah. every game and I really, really enjoyed it. And, God, I'm excited. How good's footy. All right, let's get into the ladder check out of round one of the AFLW. If you had this top four picked after the first round, you're a liar. There's (laughs) no way anyone had this picked. On top of the ladder with 800% is the Greater Western Sydney Giants. (laughs) Well, no, let's give them a round of applause, Alex, because that no one picked that. I don't reckon they even picked that. So. That's well done. Second, St Kilda after absolutely smashing the Gold Coast Suns. Fremantle after dominating Essendon are in third. Hawthorne ran away with it late against Carlton in for fourth. That rounds out your top four. North Melbourne, biggest win ever against the Brisbane Lions. So the heaviest Brisbane Lions defeat there in fifth. Swans, Adelaide and Melbourne are round out the top eight there. And then that means West Coast because of their one-point win mm-hmm. in ninth, so really living up to my won't-make-the-top-eight call. <laughs> Just small margins. 
And then it goes through, obviously, because there's been one game. Richmond, Geelong, Port Adelaide, Collingwood, Brisbane, Carlton, Essendon, Gold Coast, and the Dogs. The Dogs are going to stay there for the year. I think they'll be I think they'll be pretty close. Yep. Mm. And I think Gold Coast uh will probably stay exactly where they are in 17th. Oh, well. big call. I don't mind it. All right. <laughs> that it's a quick a quicker ladder check this week because there's only been one game played. So there's no real need to get into the machinations of it all yet. Maybe after two or three weeks is when we can sort start digging deep into it. Such a small season. Importantly, interview with our new best friend, Jess Waterhouse, coming your way right now. All right. How good is this? AFLW today with, let's be honest. Our new best friend. It's my girlfriend's favorite AFLW player. She probably loves this person more than myself, which, you know, fair, because look at those luscious locks. It is Jess Waterhouse <laughs> from the Adelaide Crows. Jess, how are we? Woo! Hello, guys. Nice to meet you. You too. This is great. Like Our TikTok on the weekend exploded because one TikTok superstar just gave us a little bit of a pump up and said, thanks for the love, and we have exploded. So I'm going to start there. What's it like being a TikTok superstar? Well, I mean, I feel like I'm not there yet at all. But um, I beg to differ. It's kind of just Jess Waterhouse. Off. I absolutely beg to differ, mate. <laughs> You're an absolute superstar. <laughs> Thank you. I was having a look this morning. 137,000 followers at over 4 million likes. And all you're doing is just creating the most wholesome, fun content ever and, and giving us an insight into your life. Like, what made you do that? Because it's different to what sort of any Australian athlete has done so far. Mm. Um, well, originally I started kind of just showing what it was like being, you know, a part-time athlete outside of playing footy and, and working another job. And um, it was in the off season. So we're just doing my gym programs and whatnot and kind of just taking people along for the journey. And then I um, showed some game day vlogs last season and gained a little bit of traction. But now I've kind of shifted towards just showing a bit more of my personality and not making it too much about football. Um, so, yeah, we just go to dinner and we just do random things. We just went to like the Royal Adelaide show on the weekend and we did a vlog and yeah, just taking people along for the ride, just doing day-to-day stuff, what everyone does, but just having fun with it. It's it's pretty awesome, Jess, because um, like I just watched you eat lunch at Sushi Train the other day and I didn't <laughs> know that I needed that in my life, but there I was watching <laughs> you eat some sushi, just every delicious meal. <laughs> and I was like, this is bloody interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't look away. Do you find it, do you, like, when does the inspiration come for those ideas for content? Because obviously content is king in the social media realm. Are you like, all right, babe, today we're going to go to Sushi Train <laughs> and, like, this this is going to be the one? <laughs> no, we literally just, like, we got inspiration from um, there's a guy named Jim Brady from the Marmalade crew and his his username handle is anything is content. And we really were like, it literally is, you could literally be doing anything. And as long as you're taking people with you, interacting with the camera and like your followers, people are going to watch it. And, you know, you could be literally doing anything. And I went to the shops to buy ingredients to make my wife a cake and people loved watching it. It's just anything is content. So yeah, we shout out Jim. We got some inspiration from him there. So awesome. this inspiration mm. is legitimate because I bought a Ninja Creamy for my partner because of Jess's reviews. <laughs> and it is honestly, I think, the favourite thing that I've ever bought for my partner. So it leads me to the important question is, what is your favourite Ninja Creamy recipe? For those playing at home, it's an ice cream maker. <laughs> yeah, I actually get this question a lot, but I think it has to be just chocolate. Chocolate everything. Um, chocolate protein yogurt, chocolate protein powder. Um, everything chocolate's a winner here. Literally how I make my Ninja Cream is like, I can't really argue. I've got the inspiration from TikTok. I'd never heard of a Ninja Creamy. I've never like anything, but it's, it's like people are really into it. Ice cream. It, just... It'll honestly, it'll change your life. I don't know if it will, Alex. I don't know if it will. <laughs> it will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what it is about it. But it's like, you know, I think I was just having, I love like, I can't go past a little sweet treat at night. So we were like. Instead of just having normal ice cream, we can make our own and add protein powder and whatnot to try and, you know, reach my protein targets as well. It's you know? healthy. It's healthy. Like it's only 250 calories for a whole tub and it's like 35 grams of protein. You're making gains while eating ice cream. We'd be able to get a creamy ninja sponsorship out of this. Yeah. Hit up our Amazon code at AFLW today slash Jess. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we will get to the important stuff. 
clearly the mullet. It is the most known hairstyle in all of AFLW. Firstly, what makes it so silky smooth and luscious? And two, why the mullet? Um, silky smooth and luscious is just for game day. Just give it a wash, you know. Um, and yeah, I get well looked after at my barber in Adelaide at Attaboy. So Tom's been looking after my mullet when I first cut it with him um, a couple of years ago. And I think I've always wanted the mullet. Um, and I mean, I was nagging my wife so long. Should I get it? Should I get it? Should I get it? And she was just like, hurry up and get it. You're just annoying me now. So then I just <laughs> booked the appointment, went and did it. And now I'm like, yeah, I love it. And I don't think I can see myself having long hair again. Because it's like a full-on mullet. It's not just a, like a nod to the mullet. It's like a full-on, like, yeah, can you give us like a turn, like just to the side? I want to see like the length of the back, if that's okay. Oh, oh my God, look yes. at it. Look at the length on it, yeah. Alex. It's so good. Man, I could only dream to have hair like that. I'm going bald. And do you find yourself, um, Jess, in like a mid mid flick sometimes where you're just like, oh, I might be in like a little movie scene here. Have you got like a have you got like a helmet you take off sometimes and you just get a little, <laughs> little bit of this vibe on it? Sometimes when I go for like at training and stuff, we call it Windy West Lakes down at where we train for the Crows. And, yeah, sometimes the wind's blowing and I thought, yeah, this is a bit of all right. It's like I'm on stage channeling like – you know, and the fans are in front of me type of thing. But, no, sometimes I forget I've got it, you know, because it's just yeah. a part of me now. And um, sometimes I catch myself in the mirror. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've actually got a mullet. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm actually really cool, guys. Yeah. I'm yeah. actually the coolest, I'm awesome. coolest person getting around. <laughs> Has there been thoughts of adding a headband to the mullet and just really pulling off the look? Mm. Well, I did get one um, to wear in the preseason. And I didn't mind it. The mm. girls got around it for sure. I actually had a little pink one, which was nice, but I got a headache from wearing it. Oh. So I don't know if I want that on game day. So I like the look for yeah. the aesthetic for sure. Yeah. I can see I like that. I get a, I get a yeah. headache from wearing a headband as well. Well, if you wear so. a hat for too long, it's the same thing. I get Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So we will get on the important stuff. Yeah. We are here to talk that about That is the most important thing to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> we do need to talk about footy. The, <laughs> okay, of no, course, you're right. The season started over the weekend. The Adelaide Crows got a big dub against Port Adelaide in the showdown. And it got a bit testy at times as a showdown should. You did barrel someone over twice in 30 seconds and got a bit <laughs> physical. So walking away from that, but also the win is an important way to start the year. Yeah, certainly. Just happy that we we're able to start our campaign with a win. Um, we knew that Port Adelaide were going to come out firing. Um, they've spent, I guess, their off-season recruiting really strongly. They had kind of had the first picks in the draft and um, were able to take, like, you know, some good talent from our Sample League. So we knew that they were going to come out um, – you know, anyone with another 12 months under their belt with a new preseason coming together as a group, just more time together, you know that they're going to get stronger. So, yeah, we knew they were going to come out firing, but I'm just glad that we're able to stand up in some tough conditions down there at Alberton, which were windy, and, yeah, get the job done, start our campaign off strongly. Yeah, it was definitely – it was a windy little weekend, wasn't it? I don't yeah. know if you saw any of the games uh, here in Melbourne, Jess, but it, the ball was blowing all over the yes. shop. Now you did get into a little bit of um, a little bit of a biff because you ab- absolutely barreled O'Day there uh, in, two times in thirty seconds. What's it? Um, do you guys have it like a, a little chat about it after? Like, is there is it like heat afterwards, or is it sort of like forgotten about and you just get on with things? I mean, I cop a pretty heavy mouthful from a lot of the opposition teammates as it is, so. Um, no, nah, I don't really take too much notice to it. If there was something, I'm not there listening to it anyway. But, um, yeah, just whatever in the moment um, to protect my teammates and to make it easier for them, I'm going to do. So, yeah, as long as you play fair, I'm all for it. Like water off a waterhouse mullet. Oh, I like it. It's just it's just the way you go about the game. But <laughs> going into this season, obviously, a, a sort of a tough way to start with a showdown. But last year, obviously, knocked out in the preliminary final. In such a short season, getting off to a good start seems vitally important. Definitely, yeah. We were really disappointed, obviously, with the end of our campaign last year. Um, two prelim losses in the in the last couple of years. Um, so, yeah, the girls were just hungry to get away and work hard. And, um, yeah, now finally the games have started again, just crack in, and I'm glad we got one win on the board with only 11 rounds to play. And the team's looking really fit. Jess, um, first time, you know, having a full preseason, that kind of thing. Has that made uh, a difference to your performance, do you think? Certainly, yeah. 
I think we um, were eager to, after, after the loss in the prelim, we were eager to get away and um, we kind of had like this unspoken rule between the group where we just wanted to make sure we kept on top of our fitness in the off season. No one really kind of dropped off. We had our holidays and obviously had that mental reset, which we needed, but everyone was kind of keen to get back into the club early at the year, um, January, February, and just really get stuck in. So then when we could <clears throat> start playing football again in the preseason, we were just at a higher level than what we were in previous years. Um, yeah, so I think fitness is really something that we've worked hard on and we've got a great strength and conditioning, high-performance team down there. So You've got Freo this weekend. Have you taken in any of uh, the way that Fremantle dispatched of Essendon on Saturday, Ed, or is that something that you'll get into later in the week because they – just the, their game plan seemed a lot of run and carry, so it seems like it's going to be a, a fairly fast game this weekend. Uh, yeah, we haven't really – we don't really look ahead much. We just look at that opponent that we're going to be playing. So we'll do some opposition analysis um, this week leading into the game. Um, but, yeah, if we can focus on the way that we want to execute, I guess, Crow's game style, we're confident that we can take it up to the top teams. And, um, yeah, we do some opposition analysis, but we don't, I guess, heavily focus on that. But yeah, I did. I did watch the game, and um, yeah, the competition's just getting stronger and stronger, isn't it? Yeah, it it really is. That was my next question. Do, do you get to watch many of the games, and and what are your thoughts on on the level this season? We've seen massive improvements, like from Frio, uh, from Hawthorne, West Coast, and that kind of thing. Um, does that get spoken about much around the club? I mean, for me, like, I'm just a footy fan, so as much footy I can watch, the better. I just love it from just, like, a general point of view, just enjoying my time off and watching footy. Um, but, no, it doesn't – we don't talk about it around the club. I mean, I love talking footy. I talk it <laughs> all the time. But, um, yeah, I guess that the expansion clubs and um, – they've just had more time in the system now. Mm-hmm. We know how important that is. So um, I guess the more we move towards, like – professionalism full-time and, yeah, the competition is just going to get better and better. So it's really nice to see teams like Hawthorne do well. I just want to sort of go back a bit into your life and career. You were the captain of the Young Matildas at 15 years old and played in the well, the A-League women or the W-League as it was then for Adelaide United. So how is that? And then also, I suppose, seeing what the Matildas have done in the last sort of five years, has it been sort of enjoyable to sit back and watch and just reflect on the time you had as a young Matilda? Yeah, it seems like forever ago now, like it's, it's such a long time ago and I'm, my, my focus is obviously completely on footy. I don't really watch as much soccer as what I used to, but, yeah, the I think the Matildas just really put women's sport on the map, like what they did in the World Cup and so exciting to watch. And um, some teammates that I had back in the day are still on the squad list, which was really cool to see as well. Um, but, yeah, sell out crowds and just – household names now are the Matildas players. So just really proud about how they've kind of stepped forward. I, I remember back in the day going out and watching the senior team and we'd be the only ones in the crowd. There'd be no one there. No one would know that they're playing. So just the impact that they've had in the media and representation is really important. Can you sort of see the AFLW in the next sort of three to five years going on a similar journey and path towards, you know, playing most of your games at bigger stadiums rather than, at the, you know, the ovals where, you know, you are sort of stuck with some pretty average conditions most week? I mean, I hope so. I'd love for it to happen right now, but <laughs> we just want it now. But, yeah, hopefully in the next few years it just grows and grows. I mean, um, Matildas are massive, but, yeah, I c- you can s- we can see that we're on the upwards trend with, AFLW and, um, yeah, just hopefully gets bigger and bigger the more that we share what we do. You've got your random twirly question that you're going to ask everyone this season. Uh, I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking about that. I was going to I was gonna change it up, but yeah. I will. I'll, I'll ask the random twirly question. You want it to be the same? Uh, go for it. <laughs> okay, Jess, if you find yourself oh, no. <laughs> in a... <laughs> <laughs> no, if you if you found yourself um, in a a South American prison, <laughs> and you've got you got mm-hmm. twenty four hours before they're just going to cut you out of there. No one's ever going to hear from you again. You don't know where you're going, and you've got one phone call that you can make, and this person has to enact every possible thing to get you out of there. Who on your team are you calling to get you out of that situation and why? God, we got a few top 
types of those players, I reckon, at the Crows. It'd have to be Chelsea Randall. <laughs> yeah, fair. fair enough. You, you just have to. What else do you say about Chelsea Randall? She's just that person, you know. She went with MJ on that amazing race show. She's just mm-hmm. one of a kind. But Who is it definitely not? Ebony Marinoff, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, I, I, I appreciate <laughs> how quick that answer was just straight under the bus. So I would have said, yes, I would have said Anne because yeah. if I want someone like trying to break me out of prison, possibly Anne. Yeah, absolutely. Don't want to mess with Anne. But a, as we wrap up, how far do we think the crows question, go for it? I was going to say, my question is, why am I in the prison to start with? Like, why am I over there? Uh, well, let's you, go with you smuggled a ninja creamy into Mexico and they're illegal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, smuggled a ninja. Yeah, got to got to get your ice cream even while you're in Mexico. You're absolutely right. I'm on board with it. Yeah, absolutely but, right. Yeah, as we wrap up, uh, very tough draw this year for the Crows, as I mentioned earlier. You've got Brisbane and North Melbourne coming up through the season. How far do you think this list of yours can go? Everyone's got to believe they can go all the way. I'm really, um, yeah, confident in the group this year, and obviously the new recruits that were brought in as well. To see that Brooke Boyle made her debut in round one is pretty special. We had like a Guernsey presentation and we really thought like how many people really make their debut into a existing list, you know, like an, an ex-premiership team like in round one, not many. You know, I think the last that we had was Tia Charlton and look at the athlete that she is. So, yeah, I think we're confident in our list and week in, week out, we'll just keep working and, yeah, strive for the ultimate hopefully. I love it. Awesome. That's a great way to wrap up. All right, this has been Jess Waterhouse. A massive thank you to coming on AFL today, AFLW today, Jess. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Nice to chat to you. Thanks, Jess. All right, we're back. How good was that? Great hang with Jess Waterhouse. I want to go to Sushi Train now. I absolutely want to go to Sushi Train as well. I think there's one let's downstairs. Do yeah, let's do it. And we'll, we'll film ourselves and we'll see if we get as many, as many views as Jess Waterhouse. I've never filmed out. a TikTok, so. Me either. Yeah. I've got yeah. a TikTok account mainly just to see all of our stuff. Mm-hmm. That's about it. Okay. But anyway, let's get into this game by game. But as said at the start of the show, two minutes on every team. Spence, try and give us a wind up when we get to two minutes there. Uh, social gal Spence in the background. Had the best time on the weekend. Hated the chips at Windy Hill. Check out the TikTok. Hated food. the chips at Windy Hill. Yeah. Check out the chip reviews that we're going to do at every game we go to on TikTok. Coming Quality your way. content there. MCG, Friday afternoons, the next one. Done. All right, let's get into it. Sydney Swans, they defeated Collingwood by 15 points on Friday night at North Sydney Oval. Of course, we're going to start with the Swans. Chloe Malloy, of course, kicks the season's first goal. How awesome was that? We were we were all pretty excited about yeah. that. As soon as I saw it in hand, she takes that mark. Uh, I was like, this... This is this is what we needed to happen. Yeah. Actually, Chloe and Malloy slotting the first one, loved it. Just as the men's season started, a Sydney Swan kicking the first goal of the season, as it was written in the stars. <laughs> it was great, but I thought the run and carry from the Swans was phenomenal. Like a lot of smart kicks out of defence. Obviously, Collingwood gave them the chance with a lot of behinds, but they got the footy, found an outlet kick, and were just like, "We're running." Uh, it, it actually took me by surprise. They moved the ball. Um, really, really quickly, run and carry, get it into their forward line. Um, there are a few sort of um, clumsy little mistakes in the in the beginning. They couldn't uh, uh, get the run as much as they wanted to. Yeah. Uh, but then they just, they really got on to it and, and the ball movement was absolutely um, elite. Well, because you had a look for the Swans, it's like uh, McAvoy was absolutely phenomenal there, but you also had Montana Ham and Laura Gardner in there as well. Mm-hmm. Like Chloe Malloy pops up and does what she needs to do when she needs to do. I thought... Ali Malloy was beaten on the night, but still provided a great outlet when they're like, oh, someone needs to take a mark desperately here. Yeah. Um, I thought Ali Morfitt yeah. was really, really good in the ruck. Um, every time they took her out of the ruck, Frederick just got on top of whoever they put in. You know, Fred- Frederick is amazing, um, but Ali Morfitt was just able to control mm. everything when she was uh, in the ruck mm. and, and getting it to those on ballers. Uh, I said about Montana Ham, and I thought, she looked really good as well. It was her first full preseason as mm-hmm. well, and a lot of chat out of the Swans is coming. This is going to be our breakout player, and you can see bits and pieces like, oh, she's going to be the best player in the league in two years. Yeah, she's she's elite, and it's just it's beautiful to watch her play. It's it's like you know watching Chloe, like all of those elite yeah. players. You can see the growth and potential, but also the skill that she has now to really impact the mm-hmm. game. And Kennedy in defence I thought was really solid. Late late in the game when Collingwood were making a thrust of it, 
thought took some really crucial intercept marks mm-hmm. and just really just sort of, you know, with these ones, a bit of slow the play down. Come mm-hmm. on, come on, gals, slow it down. We're on top here. Let's not lose this. I yeah. Thought. Just a good performance. From yeah, I thought, and and that's what you want from your back line. You want them to take those yeah. intercept marks um, and be able to help control things out of defence, which yeah. I just thought they were awesome. And Matty Collier, unfortunately, came out of the game with concussion late when we had a little bit of the biffo, but I think you missed one to two weeks in the Ws. Mm. It's 12 days when you get concussed. So that sucks. First game back from yeah. an ACL. Yeah. Not what we want to see. Fan bases, Swans are like, how good's life? Beating Collingwood in the men's and the dub, how good? Excellent. Collingwood, uh, I thought their pressure was good, but they got the ball forward and they're like, oh, what are we doing with it? Yeah, they really didn't know what to do with it um, at all uh, and and didn't make make the most of their inside 50 dominance either. Yeah, you have a look at sort of the stat lines. It's like Collingwood everywhere except for where it matters. Mm-hmm. And that's at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how good, how good you are. It's if you can't win on the scoreboard, what are we doing? Yeah. At 46 inside 50s, but their disposal efficiency was just horrendous all night. And I suppose that was hired by uh, Britt Benici, who had a bunch of the footy, Yeah, but went at 29% when it was in her hands, which just sort of, when you're getting it 20, 20 to 30 times, yeah, not good. It's not great at all, actually. Mm. Yeah. But you said before the game that you were sort of worried that they didn't have a lot of leadership on the field with a lot of injuries there. So do you think they sort of struggled in that aspect? Yeah, I think that I think that you do. I think there's a lot of um there's a lot of safety in having your leaders on the ground. So they didn't have Lauren Butler or Bree Davy. Yeah. Um and I think that has a massive impact. Um, you know, teams aren't just one player, but someone like not having a Brie Davy on the field yeah. where she's a, an elite player but also an elite leader as well. And I think that they rely on her um, a lot on the ground, uh, you know, just for advice and setting things up and that kind of thing as yeah. well as as well as well her dominance on the ground. So um, one thing I really liked was <laughs> Stacey Livingston. Um, the first goal. The first goal in her 67 games of AFLW and she absolutely loved it. Yeah. It was almost the, I don't know how to celebrate this, but this is the greatest moment ever. Yeah. It was nice. I think um, back, back in the day pre-AFLW, she had a, a few stints on the forward line yeah. and, and, and kicked a few. So I I think she's, she'll be really happy that yeah. she got that. And and Ruby was quite good first game back from injury. Yeah, I was really happy. I was a little bit worried um, about Rubes that she might lack uh, a little bit of confidence um, coming back in because I know how disappointed she was with that injury yeah. last year and it really does a lot to your psyche. But she was good. <laughs> she was really confident, really solid um, down back. So, uh, yeah, I, th- I think that she'll really be good this season and, and, and stand up for them. Fan bases, Collingwood may look at this guy. That's one that half slipped away. Mm-hmm. So if we look back in the shorter seasons, these fine margins in games could really come back to cost you. I think we'll talk about throughout the season, accuracy kills. Mm-hmm. And that's as simple as that. Other game on Friday night, the West Coast Eagles and the Daisy Pierce era begun. 6-4-40, defeating a Richmond 5-9-39. We'll start with West Coast. Go on, do it. What a delightful match that was, wasn't it, Alex? Oh, yeah, it was It was great for me saying West Coast were going to be terrible and it didn't matter that Daisy Pierce was their coach. And, and diddly, 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 look what they did. <laughs> I was watching it with sheer delight. They, like... They look like a different team out there. I know there yeah. was a lot, of, a lot of movement on the list on the yeah. preseason, but they are a different team. They look like a different team. Uh, they and were drilled. They were, weren't they? It was a very simple game plan, and you said some teams may need to go back to getting the basics right. It was kick to space, get into space, run to space, uncontested marks. In the first quarter, Richmond were like, what is happening? Mm-hmm. Why can't we get near the foot? Because Daisy Pierce like, we're just going to run. Yep. It was it was work right. Yep, it was- 100%. Um, they had really, really great pressure around the footy, lots of numbers at it, um, but they always had a spare player off the ball who was ready to clear and, and mm-hmm. kick onto that passage of play, um, whereas Richmond was all just a bit running around under nines type yeah. thing, trying to get to the ball and trying tr- trying to get it out. So I think um, that's where West Coast really hit them. And I know it was a really close game, but we, we expected um, Richmond to get on top here with their experience and their things, um, but... Yeah, I'm really, really proud of West Coast yeah. for for what they did. And Daisy Pierce, you know, they had the camera like yeah. on her the whole time over here. Um, and the one thing I love about her is she's just so cool, calm. Gave away nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Jess Hosking in the revenge game. 
gained all the revenge in the world. Yeah. 15 touches, two goals, six marks, five tackles. Just like, you know what you had. Yeah. You lost it. I, I really liked uh, her game. I thought she really stepped up as uh, a leader, I think more so than she had at Richmond. Yep. Um, and being delisted, there's there's nothing better than than getting one back at yeah. your old team. Is like it? it's you've been fired. Yeah. Like it's not let's not say delisted. you've been fired. Yeah. You've been made redundant. Yeah. It's your not- position is no longer available. <laughs> yeah. No payout. Yeah, it's, it's not a great feeling, but I also thought Ella Roberts was really good as well. Had 20 disposals, did a lot with the footy, and then Charlotte Thomas was well with 24. So just for the fan base, worst goes like, how good? How good? Daisy Pierce, this rules. Yeah. Um, and a lot of good goal celebrations yes. as well. There was a lot of that over the weekend. We can talk about that. But I thought they had some some really good ones. And it's good to see that they're playing good footy. They get to have a lot of fun out there, you know. So I think yep. that's a that's a major change for West Coast. Well, let's get to the other side of the coin, Richmond, who we said before the game, potential banana peel. Mm. Almighty banana peel at the end of that. It was the three bananas on Mario Kart that you just keep running over and just can't get any momentum like – we can start with Mon Conti, who after the first quarter was just like, yeah, I am the best player. Like, I'm going to put the team on my back and get them into the game. Unfortunately, no one else got the memo and no, joined in. Yeah, no one came with her. You see her sort of start and she's like, okay, let's try and do this as a team. Yeah. Let's try and work this out together. Um, and then when she gets absolutely nothing from the team, she's like, okay, Everybody on, yeah. let's go in and do this. Well, um, 31 disposals, 603 metres gained. The next best for Richmond was 350 metres gained. Yeah. So that just shows you how much she put them on the back. Stats yeah. guy hates metres gained, but I think in W more so, metres gained is one of the most important yeah. aspects because getting it towards the goal in low-scoring games are important. Yeah. I felt um, I felt really bad for Katie Brennan. Oh. She just had the, like, the shocker. Um, oh, the shocker of all shockers. The, like, let's not mince words here. Yeah. This was horrendous for a player we expect a lot of. Yeah, I know. And you you kind of think in the in the mentality, she's such a uh, she's an elite player. She is strong mind. She is a, a like she is a leader on that yeah. field. When you're missing set shots directly in front of goal, when you're giving away fifty meter penalties. Um, Sometimes you just got to look at yourself and be like, what is going on? Is mercury in the microwave? Is it, you know, <laughs> <In the microwave. laughs> is there mercury in my Gatorade? Yeah. What is going on? She just couldn't string it together. I felt, I felt really bad for her because she, yeah, she's, she's an elite player. Yeah. I think giving, they gave away what, four, four 50 meter penalties in the first half and it just mm-hmm. releases so much pressure and it was their ill discipline mm-hmm. that's lost them the game. That mm-hmm. in the first quarter and a half, giving away so many free kicks in fifties, like they've ended up winning the free kick count twenty three to twenty two, but at halftime was like eleven four. It yeah. was it was stupid. When you look at, at games that are that close, and you, you you talk about oh it's a it's a kick or a bounce of the ball here and there, you're like no no no, it's the four fifty meter penalties in the four, first yeah. half, you and know, it, and missing the goal from yeah. ten meters out hitting the post. Like, so it was windy, but it's small margins in a season that isn't long. Yeah, could come back to them, and that's what that's the fan base is. It's like. Oh, not again for Richmond. Like mm. you said, a list that we expect so much of. Yeah, mm, exactly. That could be them this year. We'll move to Saturday. Monica Oval, GWS handed out a footballing lesson, which I don't think either of us expected. 10 12 72 to the Dogs, 139. Oh, this is not good signs. But we'll start off with GWS. GWS. Eilish O'Dowd. Goal of the season, 15 seconds in. Yeah, it was pretty elite, wasn't it? What, straight out of the ruck, takes a bounce, kicks the goal. I'm going to say, you ran too far. <laughs> but you know what? It's round one. It's all in the fun of the game, Alex. Come on. Yeah, I feel like you couldn't pull that one up. <laughs> like when Isaac Rankin ran 37 metres for Adelaide on the mm-hmm. wing for Collingwood, had to pull that one up. This one, I feel like when you're running towards goal, that's ah, fine. Yeah, you go, yeah. you go. Go and do your best work. Actually, I found in in a lot of the games, in previous seasons, what has been a big frustration of mine yeah. is holding the ball. Yeah. They just never call it. Like it's literally you get tackled and the ball drops out and then there's no holding the ball. What they've done this season is be really, like really bring that into, into line. And so there was a lot more holding the ball calls this yeah. week, which I really, really liked. Um, but, yeah, GWS, they look Pretty good, oh. don't they, Alex? Is it that they were really good or the dogs are this bad? Because 
we were very concerned about the Giants preseason, mm-hmm. and then to come out and kick one, of, kick the you know have the highest percentage after the weekend. But then you have a look at it. Alice Parker has twenty nine. Nicola Barr has twenty nine. Mm-hmm. Goldsworthy has eighteen and four. Like it was just a smashing. But it more came after half time because you sort of have a look. Uh, the score worm. We love a score worm here. We won't make Gerald do it, but it was two goals four to one two at half time, and then GWS went. See ya. See ya. Kicking eight goals to one point. I like that though because they they show that they do have the capability to kick goals yeah. if if they want to. You know, like um, we we have had some really low scores in in previous seasons, but to show like you know when you are uh, uh, running over one of the, your opposition, yeah. that you do have the capability to pile on eight goals in mm. the third quarter. And they've yeah. done that by having only 35 inside 50s. And you look like disposal efficiency inside the forward 50, 74%. Mm. Like, that is a very good sign going forward. So it's like if they're going to get the ball inside 50, maybe you're up against a weak defense, but you're going to take advantage of the situation. So all in all, the Giants, this is just a big – how yeah. good's life? Yeah. There is a big, big sound. Came, like I can't really quantify how good it is for them. Yeah. That's how the fan base is like, are we good? I don't know. It's mm. probably one of the ones, if they're one and two in two weeks, we'll probably know where they sit. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they go up against, you know, I mean, the top sort of top four teams. Well, they got to play Richmond this weekend. Yeah, so that'll be that'll be a really interesting a really yeah. interesting game just to see how, how good they are. Mm. If you can't beat Richmond, then, you know, you're probably not as good as we're talking yeah. about right now. Let's get to the other side of the coin. Uh, the Western Bulldogs, that was awful. Yeah. And, and I, I know like, ooh, it's like, oh, they're playing and they're trying. That was bad. Yeah. You, you can't sort of mince around it. I know they've been decimated and year after year they just get pilfered and players get taken away. Yeah. Ellie Blackburn was the only player with twenty over 20 possessions for the team. Only one more on the team had more than 10 possessions and that was Aaron's with 13. Mm. So that shows you how poor they were. They lost the possession count 155 to 278. They won the hitouts forty three to nine though, mm. but just smacked. Yeah, absolutely smacked. Yep. Is there? Can you find like? <laughs> yeah. Can you find it's a hard. positive? It is. It, it is, is hard. really hard considering where the team has come from in AFLW history, yeah. um, and how successful they had been to watch the team get totally pilfered and then not build anything um, back up. Yeah. You know, um, it's it's. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty dismal for Western Bulldogs. They um, took 19 marks. 10 of those marks were intercepts from GWS. So th- through four quarters of football, nine kicks hit the target. Mm. That's not a good sign for the rest of the season. And I know they've got Port Adelaide this Friday night Friday afternoon at the MCG. Even though I don't think Port are good, seeing how Port played against Adelaide, mm. I'm I'm worried for how the dogs will go. I know it's one game. But if it's a team we didn't expect to do much doing this to them, yeah. what are other teams going to do to the dogs and what does that say for the program? Like mm-hmm. this is this is like West Coast levels in the in the men's. What do they do about it? Yeah. What do they do about it now? You can't, the thing is you, you can't because you, you can't – it's the thing I've, I've realised just over the weekend just watching a lot of the games. You can't buy experience. Yeah. Just got to play. Yeah. Just got to play and just hope that effort and just go back to simple just – Kick Mark Campbell, kick Mark Campbell. Don't yeah. try anything. Don't try anything special. Just just work hard. Try and find space. And yeah. If you have to do the outlet kick down the line, so be it. It's just. Yeah. I'm yeah. feeling for Ellie Blackburn. It would it would be um, she'd be in a lot of pain. Just yeah, I feel like she'd be questioning herself. She's and and uh, yeah, it's it's hard to perform well when you when your team yeah. is performing but that. What more poorly. can she do? Twenty. 25 touches, nine clearances, eight tackles. Yeah. Like she's done everything that she can yeah. and just the team hasn't gone with her, unfortunately. Yeah. And that's the fan base is like, ah, oh, this, this is not good. Yep. It's tough. Yep. Windy Hill, Saturday afternoon. We were all there. Essendon 3321 got deleted by Fremantle. 10464. We'll start off with Essendon. And the main talking point out of that was the collision with Amber Clark and Bonnie Toogood. An amazing photo taken by the Herald Sun's mm-hmm. uh, photographer's name just completely slipped my mind. It's it's online of the collision. Mm. You could see it coming. It sounded bad and it ended worse. It was um, horrific. Yeah. It was really, really bad. Um, I was on the boundary for that game. And while we we're waiting for the stretcher to come out, the whole 
crowd was silent. Yeah. And that's like really, really eerie. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, people, people were really worried, really worried. Mm. Um, but that was good. We heard that she was, Amber Clark was back up and yeah, so um, after the walking game, around. Yeah. The coach said, cleared of all neck issues, walking around, obviously concussing protocols, but walking around seemingly in okay yeah. spirits. Bonnie Toogood was not in good spirits. She was distraught after the game. Off for scans today. Bombers are hoping it's an MCL, not an ACL, mm -hmm. which in that collision, I thought we just thought it was a bad corky at the yeah. time. But then you sort of see in that photo, the collision's like, okay, you can see how that's happened. Yeah. So that sort of is the starting point of where everything went wrong. I want to go back to it in the first quarter, playing Bonnie as a deep full forward mm -hmm. compared to last season when she was up the field getting footy for fun. Didn't like that selection. You call. didn't like it at all, did you? No, because you've got your best player on a very windy day at Essendon. The ball's not getting down there much. Why not get the footy in their hands? Mm -hmm. Get your best players the footy. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty easy on that. But they got belted in transition. They gave up over 40 inside 50s, had 22 themselves. There was no forward pressure, which makes sense. Two of their forwards go down. Yep. But they've laid six tackles inside 50 compared to 22 by Fremantle. It's, the so it's a lot. It's a lot. And I know we... we we have to look at this sort of glass half empty, glass half full mm -hmm. because it's like big injuries to their forward setup. Uh, but Prasparkas and Nanskowen just worked their absolute backsides off mm -hmm. just all day. At the end of the game, Maddie Prasparkas was cooked. Yeah. She was like, oh, this, this was an effort. Like, what, 25 yeah. touches all over the place? That's just Maddie for you. Yeah. You know, still, she works really, really still hard. Still Team Georgia. Alex. <laughs> um, yeah, look, the Bombers, <clears throat> the Bombers were pretty. Um, pretty dismal on the weekend. Uh, I thought the the collision with Amber Clark and Bonnie Toogood really um, yeah. shook them a little bit and I found that they just could not play football after that. What I thought that they really struggled with and what really got them was they just couldn't um, mark the ball. Yeah, so many, help. so many dropped marks. Um, and then from that, they were just under constant pressure. They couldn't set up anything going forward to be able to get any scores on the ball at all. And I think that's what really let them down. They only took 28 marks for the day. So yeah. that, that, that makes sense. Um, but I thought their, their ball use wasn't good as well. And especially on a, it was tricky on a windy day, but Fremantle, when it came time to lowering the eyes and hit a target, seemingly did that well. Mm. Um, I thought down back, Amy Gale was impressive. Mm -hmm. Really strong mark. Um Composed, but I think you can sum up Essendon's game in the first 10 seconds. There was an intercept mark taken, kick off the side of the boot. Yeah. That's all you needed to see for Essendon yep. for the day. Absolutely. Uh, fan bases, how are you feeling? Um, yeah, pretty pretty disappointed. Yeah. Pretty disappointed. I think that they're better than that. Um, but I, I think, thought they would be yeah, better than that. Um, but I thought they just got got shook. Yeah. Can I tell you a really um, funny story that I heard about Amy Gala on yeah. the weekend? Um, she did her ACL yeah. and, um, went in for surgery on an ACL and they got in and they're like, oh, not your ACL, a couple other things here. We'll just do a bit of a clean out and off you go. Oh. Yeah. Result. Yeah. Absolute result. <laughs> That's a win. So, yeah. She didn't have as much time off as she thought she was going to. So you're going to take the small wins with the ACLs, That's, I reckon. That, I, that, that's definitely a win. That's not yeah. a small win. Uh, let's get to Fremantle. I thought their pressure was excellent. Mm -hmm. I already mentioned their, their tackling inside 50, but also 41 inside 50s. But it was when the ball hit the deck. Mm -hmm. They were just like run and movement. There was a lot of good link-up play. The important thing was on a tricky day in the wind – they took advantage when they had the wind. They really did, didn't they? Those balls like took off down yeah. that left-hand side and it was awesome. But they kicked nine goals with the wind. Yeah. And that's what's won them the game. I know last quarter there was a bit of junk time going on when Essendon were just cooked, but it's like they put the foot to the throat in a season where I think percentage may matter. Yeah. A big win like this could matter come the end of the season. Yeah. Where do you want to start with the players? Do we go with the with the, with the the Irish? On, on your tie. Yeah. <laughs> God, she was good. And she was just everywhere, mm. absolutely everywhere. Uh, if I heard Kelly Underwood say on your tie one more time, I was like, oh, my goodness. It was, she was just everywhere. So, yeah. Um, yeah, great, great game by her. Mm. Yeah, but you also had Ainsley McCarthy who was everywhere. Kicked two goals, laid 14 tackles. Mm -hmm. Like there's there it is. You're kicking two goals. But I think at the end of the day, coach just got 14 tackles. This is how we play. Like, Good game, kid. Two goals are great. 14 tackles is what we want because yep. that was the pressure. They just swarmed Essendon at every point that they got near the footy. Um, I can't talk up how good Fremantle were. Yep. I just enough because I thought I wasn't expecting this whatsoever. And I've come out of the game going, 
Oh yeah, you're you're really good. And I thought Gab Gab Newton was good in her oh, first yeah. game as well. Absolutely. Had yeah. six clearances and a bunch of tackles as well. Took a couple of marks, but fan base is out of free. Like, heave ho, way to go. Yeah, absolutely. They're up and about. Yep. It was good. Let's move on. Gold Coast got absolutely <clears throat> smashed by St. Kilda. 2820 to 11 8, 74. This was up at People's First Stadium. They still have the trumpet. Love the trumpet. <laughs> they didn't get to blow it that many times, unfortunately. They were horrendous defensively. Yep. And I don't think either of us realize it because it's ha- hard when we've got so many teams in our bubble. I noticed during the game, and then it was brought up in commentary as well, how how Gold Coast got picked apart in the offseason with yep. trades and people yep. leaving. And it's just ruined their defensive setup. And we've said it earlier with the dogs. Can't buy experience. You've just got to play them. And that's what's going to happen with Gold Coast. So maybe we've, we've read them wrong because this is an absolute belting. Yeah, it was an absolute belting. Um, it's hard to it's hard to pick lots of positives out of it, but they did want, win the centre clearances eleven to three. Yeah. Um, so you got on ball as their robot and Whitford and single. Um, they were instrumental in that and were Robot all over. was awesome. Yeah. Wor- worked worked all day. Twenty seven touches had a, had ten tackles as well. They did have more of the footy. They just didn't use it well, and yeah. I think that that does come down to experience as well. Because sometimes you get the footy like. Oh no! I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna. Ah! Kick it. I'm just gonna kick it. I'm yeah. just gonna kick it. And yeah. you see, it, two goals, eight. They had chances in the third quarter to get back in the game, just couldn't take advantage yeah. of it. And it sort of summed up their day. I just, I think this is one of those ones where I'm not going to write them off completely. Yeah. But it's a warning signal. Yeah, agreed. And I think that's how the fan base is like, ooh, that that one hurt. Mm-hmm. Whereas you go to St Kilda. Nicky Dow's got them firing. Yeah, he does, like, doesn't he? Jesse Wardlaw kept up the preseason form. First goes like, oh, no one's near me. Grabs it out of the ruck. Bang, go. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, that was easy. Yeah. She's elite and she's used to playing at an elite level. And I yep. reckon she's probably been frustrated last season with the Saints and not yep. being able to perform at, at, at the level she wants to. Um, and I think the team has really met lifted. her. Yeah, lifted. Um and then she's lifted again. Yeah. Um, she is elite. She's she's had a great preseason. Um, and so what, 17 disposals, two goals, uh, eight marks, and nine score involvements. That's yeah. pretty That's a that's a that's, that's three, a good day at the office, three Jesse Wardlaw. Votes, yeah. Jesse Wardlaw. Yeah. yeah, absolutely love it. And then also just the ball use as well. They found a lot of they used the space of met of people's first nearly called it Metricon again, but they used the space really well. They put the ball in space and just started running. Um, they also just couldn't miss in the first half. Yeah. That was just the impressive part is scoreboard pressure and being accurate in front of goal is going to be the biggest thing in this competition. And that is not something that everybody is. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's where you're really going to put the damage and the pressure is when you yeah. hit the scoreboard. And I did note, again, stats guy's favourite stat, Molly McDonald gained 488 metres from 19 touches, thought played a very good game. St Kilda, like, hey, we, we, we thought we were good. We are good. Yeah. I think they're definitely um, one to watch yeah. this season. It'll be interesting how they they go against the you know those top yeah. top teams, your North, your Brisbane, your Adelaide. Um, I'd love to see them get up against one of those teams. Well, they've, got the, prove- they've got the Swans next week and then Essendon to start, so it's a good little start for the Saints. Yeah, and then they play oh, them and Hawthorne in round four. Bring that on. Yeah. Let's get to Taxpayer Park, Geelong, 6440, <laughs> defeated by the D6642. This feels like one that got away from Geelong. Yeah, it certainly it's, did. They'll be in there today reviewing, going, how did we lose that? Yep. It, or they were sort of in control, in control. Oh, they'd lose it a bit, but they'd still get back in control. And they haven't won the game. Yep. They'll be shocked that they haven't won this game. Mm-hmm. And again, season, small margins. That, that's one that could hurt them. On the flip side for the Ds, that's one that could really help them. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, as as much of a list change as Melbourne had last season, they're still Melbourne uh, and you can't give a team like that any space yeah. at all. You've never got it won uh, and I think you've always got to just keep putting that pressure on. Gotta Otherwise, it's going to happen like this. Now, uh, Prasparkas looked to be sore in the first quarter, managing some sort of a quad issue by the looks of it. Yeah, there was mention of her maybe not being available for selection uh, with a quad yeah. injury. So, um, yeah, it was great to see her out on the field, but that was being managed all game. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Amy McDonald was fantastic. 28 disposals and nine clearances, like 
played her absolute guts out all night. But then you had Nina Morrison and also Prasparkas when she was on the field was fantastic yeah. as well. It's like, imagine if you had two quads, how good you'd be. <laughs> I'll give you, I'll give you mine because I'm, you know, I'm Team Georgie over Team Maddie. Home. Yeah. No, I, I I get it. She she's absolutely awesome. Nina Morrison is just elite too. I really love watching her play. But also what you said about Amy McDonald, she just keeps improving every season and she's a bit of an underdog I reckon mm. um so I really enjoy when she has a, a really standout game mm. cats fans how just why not all is lost no my but dear Alex frustration yeah I 100% feel. frustration losing any game by two points you're never gonna yeah. like doing because you had a chance to win it mm. um of which Geelong certainly did but the reason they didn't if we go to Melbourne Kate Whore, stop it. She's so good. Oh, she definitely listened to the podcast last week. <laughs> I'm like, the days are going to be zero and three. And she's yeah. like, watch this, Alex, three goals. And yeah. I was like, oh, you're so good. But even my mum rang me yesterday. I was like, I was watching Melbourne and, um, and Geelong last night. Who was that Demons player that kicked all the goals? Because my mum's watched like three games of AFL. I was like, oh, that's Kate Whore, mum. She's really good. She's like, she's amazing. I'm like... I know. Mum's on the money. Yeah, good stuff, Mum's Trish. Mum's on the money. I reckon Kate Hoare, if Melbourne stay competitive during the season. BNF. Ooh, yeah, she'll be up there. Her and Jazzy Garner yeah. will be battling it out. We'll get to Jazzy later. But mm. it's also like Kate only spent six minutes on the bench all game. Yeah. Like game one, like, nah, nah, rest, rest, rest is, is for the week. I'm good. She's clocked up a few kilometres uh, on the game. On, yeah. Yeah, so does the, job, does the job there as well. I just... I just I still don't know how they've won it, but then it's like Macken has twenty five and a goal as well. Eliza McNamara, who we spent a day with doing that ASIC shoot, was yep. phenomenal in and under the footy yep. as well. Like a lot of clearances, just got the footy's like just going forward. Yep, lot good work rate. I also thought Grace Beasley was really excellent in her first game. She had fifteen disposals. She was also in Nina Morrison. Nina yep. Morrison had a huge first quarter, and then she obviously got the talking to, Grace Beasley, uh, and really helped to quieten her down because yeah. Nina Morrison was absolutely blazing away. I thought Paxi Paxman late was good as well where they needed just just a cool head with the football in hand yeah. and just used the footy quite well, just like, all right, no no dumb kick, not going to put the team under pressure. Yeah. Just used it well, a lot of experience there. Taylor Harris got injured. Yeah, Taylor, but it, did she come back too early? That was my question. I think so. Yeah, it's um, and I know I said in the previous podcast you can you can never question Taylor's um commitment, effort, and commitment um rate. But she got a couple of knocks during that game uh, and then was ruled out in the third uh, third quarter. Um, she just she was a little bit ginger the whole the whole game I yeah. thought and we didn't see that usual knock through Taylor Harris um, type play so it'll be interesting if she's in next week. Yeah. Now the free kick, not giving the ball back to the umpire, has given Geelong a sniff late. Thankfully, it didn't affect the game, but like yeah. there, there's. I mean, I could yell about this because Declan Rice copped a red card on Saturday night in Arsenal's game for the same thing. It just wasn't there. Sometimes there's there's umpires who have main character syndrome. Mm -hmm. I want to make this about me. This umpire and also Chris Kavanagh at the Emirates on Saturday night, same thing. So I, I, I'm not going to talk about Arsenal anymore. I'm really yeah. angry. But same feels. Like why? Why? I get it. It's just an accident. Like you just, it's not. It, it wasn't <laughs> yoink throwing it into yeah. the stands. It was just It's there. just they didn't give it back to the umpire. Cool. Whoever they gave it to. Give it back to the umpire. It's not about delaying the game. It's not anything like that. I don't think there's anything malicious about it. And I think that that's what those rules are brought in for is yeah. to to manage those players it's, who maybe are. It's like doing if I've got the footy here and I'm just like, hey, stats guy, and just yeet it across like that. Yeah, that's throwing it away from the umpire. Yeah. Good one for all those watching on YouTube. If you're on the podcast, I've just thrown the footy to stats guy at the other end of the room. Fan bases, the D's like, how good? We're still good. I think that they're allowed to say that. Yeah, of course you can. Mm. Let's get to the showdown at Albertson Park. It was a sellout. How good? Looked freezing. Port Adelaide, five goals, 535. Got defeated by Adelaide Crows, 7747. Port were really good. Put up a hell of a fight. Yeah. Much better than we expected. We were expecting a smashing. Yeah, we didn't um, We didn't expect them to be uh, this good. I mean, they do have... Um, There's the hate. Yeah. The, Is they there do hate have... in the... In the W though, like I've got, I, I think North Melbourne and Brisbane have that between each other. Yeah, 
But is this a manufactured one because it's a showdown? Yeah, but it kind of still is. I mean, all of these athletes want to win. Yeah. And these are the, the other people that are in your hometown and you absolutely want to beat them. So, yeah, I think there is there can be hate. Yeah. Um. So this was the closest margin of their three showdowns. Yeah. So it just shows us that Port Adelaide are really putting in and they are getting better and they can really take it um, to these better teams. Um, Crows by 14 in the end. Um, but they, they really took it to them and I think they scared the Crows a little bit. It, it was one of those ones where you felt like, Adelaide were always going to win the game, mm-hmm. but Port were just hanging around enough going, if you give us a sniff. Yeah. Like, if don't- you snooze, yeah. see you later. Uh, Sinead Goody yeah. lived up to the hype. Yeah. Bloody good goal. Yeah. God, it was good. Yeah. Give her do, give her the rising star now. I'm just telling you now. <laughs> all over. <laughs> round Calling one, it early. Done. Alex Donnelly, rising yeah, star, yeah. the goody. 15 touches, 420 metres gained, but just really good user of the footy. Yeah. So I couldn't I couldn't come up with like sort of something to look away for them. Like I thought Gemma Horton was okay down forward uh, for Port as well, but it's just building blocks, building blocks, building blocks. So they'll be decent enough, and they get to play the MCG this Friday night. How good! Yeah, is that? that's exciting, isn't it? That's going to be awesome. Yeah, gonna, I can't wait to get down there. Um, so what do you think, Port Adelaide fan base? Ah, we lost a showdown. Damn it! But it's like we They're could be okay. Showing signs. It's like hmm. Yeah, but like there's there's times where you walk away from us going, not bad. Yeah, we did we did some things right there. Yeah. Um, there's some really promising new players in there, so I reckon I reckon they'll take a little positive one out of yeah. that. Let's get across to the Crows. As expected, they did get the job done, but of course, you know, you had Ebony Marinoff just go, "Hey, watch this." Yeah, showdown medal, twenty nine touches, uh, nine tackles, five clearances. I, it was also very well backed up by Ann Hatchard in the awesome long sleeve kit as mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. 12 tackles, 22 touches, a couple of clearances as well, but also took six marks. Like if if one of them fires, you're probably not going to win. If both of them fire, you're definitely not going to win. Absolutely. Um, Anne Hatchard, as you know, is one of my favourite players. I just think she's an absolute legend. Uh, but Ed Marinoff, she was absolutely electric this week. Um, just ball winner, getting the clearances, as you said, won the showdown medal. Um, it's really hard to compete against a player who is on. Yes. Yeah. Eloise Jones made use of, she only had four disposals, kicked two goals. Yeah. But that's all I want out of my small forward. Uh, footy I'll goes take, near him. I'll take that as a stat. <laughs> yeah. Footy goes near him, get it, kick goal. I, yeah. I, it's it's the old Serioli, can kill you with 10 possessions. Yeah. And that's something, they've won by 14 points. Yeah. They've done that. But Jess Allen in the ruck as well, went forward, was like, okay, goal, sweet. How yeah. good's life? Like. Really good team performance from Adelaide where it's like, oh, there's there's more improvement to come from it. I think that's what the fan base is like. Take the dubs. We can be better. Yeah, 100%. And I think, you know, as we've spoken about as well, there's not – there's not just one role, the key role that players are playing anymore. They need to be able to switch around, especially rucks going forward and that yeah. kind of thing. I think that, yeah, Adelaide, um, they're always going to be a top team, but I think they're really going to continue to grow. Yeah. Um, and they're not just winning these games against new and improved yeah. teams by, you know, a goal or two points or whatever. They're, you know, there's by it's, 14 points. It's banking wins and then come the end of the season, it's peak. Because in the shorter season, you can afford to, as long as you're good enough to win those games, you can afford to peak come around yeah. eight. Yep. Let's get to Sunday. Frankston, Hawthorne, nine twelve sixty six beat Carlton, four four twenty eight. The wind was interesting. You kick the ball sideways, it'd go 15 metres backwards. Yeah. Got to love it. It's um, it's because it's right near the beach. We all yeah. know it's very windy down near the beach. You could literally see the, the beach. beach in one of those shots. Yeah. It was going <clears throat> absolutely everywhere. Yeah, it didn't look like a fun <laughs> day, but great game of footy, I thought. Really good game. Hawthorne, obviously, we'll start with them. They bought the same vibe that the men's team does and just like, we're just going to have fun. We're going to run. We're going to celebrate. And they're going to be that team. Like, I'm going to watch them and sit down and watch them. Yeah, they came out to play footy, didn't they? Mm. And, you know, there'd been a little bit of hype about them uh, in the preseason, mainly from us because we were ready to see what Daniel yep. Webster was um, doing with this team. Um, and he's done excellent. I think scoring 66 points in uh, Less that than game. Ideal. Well, in that game with that much wind, I was like, Absolutely. Um, I'm really happy with that score. But then you also look, their forward pressure, they laid 18 tackles inside 50. Carlton laid two, but they also won the tackle count 72 to 59. 
and they just dominate. They dominated this game. They had forty four inside fifties. Uh, may have been also someone that's like, oh, I reckon uh, Greta Body can kick a couple of goals. One goal, four. Yeah, oh, tough day. Yeah, well, you know, you could put that down to the win, but Greta Body is is she is an elite player, but she absolutely should have been kicking all of those goals. Um, so yeah, she'll she'll have a relook at things uh, this week. But that was actually Hawthorne's biggest winning margin. Love it. Ever. Dubs. Good job, Hawks. Yeah. But then it was um uh, I think stats guys also he's chipped in as well, which is really helps. Is uh, uh impressive was Breed, 13 disposals, five tackles and a goal, shrugged off a million tackles and nailed it. That- which I was just watching that going. Tackle! Tackle! <laughs> they were my notes, actually, yeah. just so you know. I was shouting out uh, Stats Guy there. <laughs> he has been putting in stats notes. Guys, like, yeah. Um, no, she was awesome, wasn't yeah. she? That goal she kicked, I think they just thought that she was going to pass it off and she was just like, no one's around me here. Yeah. I'm just going to whack it on through. And yeah. it was, yeah, it's, it's really good to see young p- players attacking the game like that yes. and really backing themselves in. And I think... Hawthorne now, um, you know, they have, they're showing that they have that skill set to back themselves in and there's yeah. going to be someone there to back you up and that there's going to be movement across the field. So, yeah, loved it. Do you think she'll be suspended for the sling tackle? I don't think there was, any, I don't think there was much in it. I think so, yes. <sighs> you saw, I saw other players yeah. this week um, mid sling tackle and then oh no, yeah. just bring them back up and <laughs> basically give them a little bear hug so they didn't get r- rubbed yeah. out. So I think if you're in any kind of sling and they hit the ground, you're going to be gone. And yeah. if, if you go on arm first, though, because like, we saw with Liam Jones last week, his sling tackle where um, it was an Aaron Cadman went arm first that it got let off. So if the head's slamming into the ground first, yes. It's like, ah, a week seems harsh for that, especially in a shorter season. Like, the suspensions are so oh, tough. Oh, yeah, they'll get you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Fan bases, Hawthorne, like, life rules. Yeah, I think that they're pretty happy. Yeah. Uh, but my my friends who are Hawthorne su- supporters are up and about. Oh, they've got a, at the Their moment. life is great. Insufferable yeah. at the moment. You had a one-year rebuild. Grow up. <laughs> Let's get across to Carlton. Tough day for them, but Abby McKay was awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Every time you looked up, she had the footy in her hands, clearances. She was also g- getting a lot of the footy to Healy Sharar as well. I thought they worked really well in midfield. Yeah. Unfortunately, they struggled once they got the ball out of the clearance to halt, to lock it down. It was a lot of uh, get it forward, comes back. It was yep. a bit of a, or was it a horsey back when you kick it back and forth back in the day? A horsey back. I think that's what we used to call it back in school. A horsey back. Horsey I've never back. heard of a horsey back. Must have been a wogger thing. Yeah, it must have been a wogger wogger thing. Yeah, good old wogger. Uh, but yeah, tough day, but the, we said before the season we weren't sure what to expect. Like they really struggled to take marks. When the ball got inside 50, again, conditions, it did come out very quickly. Mm-hmm. But I thought the Moody sisters were fantastic. Yeah, I thought they were excellent also. Try, tried really hard. A couple of times the ball hit the hands and drop outs. So, oh, if you can clunk them, I think it makes this game a lot closer. That's what I mean. It's about getting back to those uh, footy basics. Like you have to be able to take those contested marks. That is yeah. what is going to help you get those shots in goals, get your team to set up behind in front of the ball, wherever, um, and just to be able to play the game on your terms, which Carlton just did not do at any point during the game. You know, they got off to a pretty good um, start and I yeah. thought, okay, we might be on here. We I might we have a We might have a, a pretty decent game on our hands. Um, but that's when Hawthorne just sort of kicked into gear and they're like, like, no, go go away, just go away, you. Yeah. But I think you look at it, it's like, okay, you've been beaten by 38 points. It was like, there's a lot to take away from it. Like, I think you're being made by a pretty slick team. It's like, no, this is good. We're good. Enough to build on. I think that's Carlton fans need to go going, there's something to build on here. We we can work with this. Yep, 100%. Let's get to it. Grand final rematch. (sighs) Brisbane, 5-4-34, defeated by North Melbourne, 12 6 The stat from the stats guy, we used to have this little thing, this little stat of the day, little jingle we had. Stats guy, no reigning AFLW Premier, Premier has ever won the rematch. It's a good stat from That's the stats That's actually guy. a really good stat. He's well over, done, he's stats over there just flinging his shirt around, how good's life. Yeah. Like, just, it's like North Melbourne have won a game. What is this? Oh, that's right, it's the AFLW. We'll start with the Lions. Okay, let's start with the Lions. They did not get into this game at all. No. From the start, they they f- felt 
off, but they were also under constant pressure. They felt really flat-footed to me. Mm. I feel like they lacked um, their usual um, energy and tenacity and their real, like, attack at the footy. Uh, And I think when you're going up against a team like North Melbourne, who uh, coming off a a premiership loss... You, you cannot not ever take your foot off the gas. Like it's their biggest ever loss. And did you know it was 35 degrees? Yes, I did know it was 35 degrees. Oh, did you? Because it wasn't mentioned at all on the broadcast. Oh, really? No, no I didn't hear it every three minutes. No. <laughs> oh, you're being sarcastic. Yes, Got you. No, yes, no, no, a little no. bit. Good, yes. Every good, three welcome. minutes, the sweltering heat here in Brisbane, it's 35 degrees. We get it. It's hot. It's Brisbane. <laughs> But it's almost like that Brisbane were the team traveling to the heat. Yeah. Because they they suffered. Like, you had a look at it. The third quarter, they just got yep. smoked. Belted. Absolutely and belted. It just, it just killed off any chance of this game being competitive in the end. Mm-hmm. I thought they were decent in the last quarter. They sort of like, okay, we, we really need to get back into it. There was a lot of effort and a lot of work there. But it's just, it was a bad way to yep. start your season. I. I thought Ali Anderson was good, and that's... Oh, faithful Ali Anderson. Yeah, Isn't but, she great? But, 15 clearances, 1-5. Yeah. That's like, elite level footy. But it's also like, what else have you got out of the game? And there's not a lot to take out of it. I know Isabel Dawes had a bunch of the footy as well, but you ha- sort of have a look like Dakota had a dirty day, hardly mm-hmm. got near the footy. She the was, only time she got near it was when she was, when, when she was giving a little... Trying to start some fights. And yeah. Shanae Davison looked like she broke her wrist. Yeah, that looked um, that looked really bad, didn't yeah. it? Like yeah. straight away when you've got the arm in the Guernsey sling. Ooh. Yeah, it's <laughs> just like, running off the field with it as well. Yeah, and yeah. everyone's just like, no, wrap, wrap it up, yeah. wrap it up, get off. Like, yeah. it's it's not good. Uh, fan bases, Brisbane, like, oh. Yeah, it was, it, it was a shocker. Um, their biggest loss um, coming at the hands of North Melbourne. So and Stasevich seemed lost for words when he was being interviewed at three quarter time. He was like, Oh, I, I got nothing here. Yeah. Well, I, but like especially at three-quarter time, right? After yeah. they just got pumped. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get to North. Woo! First ever win over the Lions mm-hmm. after five straight losses. But from the first bounce, it was like, we're here. Like they were pumped up for this. They were ready to go. They had that many smothers in the first quarter. I lost count. I think it was like six or seven of mm-hmm. them. But they just, they were fitter. They were faster. They were stronger. Mm-hmm. Everything worked for them. Mm-hmm. I love the game plan. Get the footy, look inside. Yeah. The inside 45 degree kick and then someone running off, go. Emma Carney started with it and just gone. See Emma Carney is so elite. I don't want to run into her. It hurt. Yeah. <laughs> And well, she I would, met her and hung out with her. She, Great hang, but she, she would make me. she would make sure it hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Apparently she's the lippiest in yeah. the whole in the whole AFL. Like, but when yeah, you like the, will get on you. Can we say the words elder statesman of oh, the yeah. league? Okay. You can throw a lip when you've got that resume. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. You're Whereas absolutely it was right. like Sinead Goody from Port coming in front of me. Ah, <laughs> shut up, you. Shut up. But Jazz Garner. We talked about Kate Hall's game. Yeah. Let's talk about Jasmine Garner's game. Give me the stats. 27 disposals, one goal, 17 kicks, only one mark, but six tackles, six clearances, 445 metres gained. Just that, yeah, look at me, 86% time on ground. How good am I? She is, she's elite. You know, we, we've definitely got her up there yeah. for League B, BNF this year. Has to win the League BNF. If she doesn't win it, win one, it's like a crime. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Beyonce's never won album of the year, you know, and sometimes you get stuck with that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I haven't, not, not a hatred for Beyonce, but I just say Beyonce isn't great because it really fires up my government, like just wants to kill me when I say it. It's like the easiest fly yeah, fishing of can, all time. You can shush. Yeah. Uh, Ash Riddell was great as well. Had 31 disposals. Always. Was always in there. Reliable. But then you sort of just go through the team. It's it's just like everyone did their job. Like I thought for 11 disposals, Kate Shearlaw had a phenomenal game. Yeah. A great marking option down the line, took six marks, just was there when you needed a contested mark. But also the defensive setup of North, they're just like, oh, yeah, footy, clunk, footy, yeah. clunk. It was it was simple. I think you said it best when you're like, everyone did their job. Yeah. And that's the thing. When you're in a, a, a team like that, that, that's that's your role. Yeah. Go and do your job. And if you do your job well, you're going to come out and beat Brisbane. Do you know what I mean? So Darren Crocker didn't mention the grand final apparently. I I don't know. I'm calling bull dust. Do are you? I How thought, can you not talk about it? I reckon that 
maybe he didn't. Yeah. But how can it not be in everyone's? Well, if you're doing tape, <laughs> you're mm. showing the grand final. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's got to have been mentioned. Yeah. Um, and also Brisbane coach uh, Craig Stasovic just talked about the hunger that the Roos had in that game. And that's one of the things that you can't you can't beat. Yeah. When someone's got a hunger for the ball more than you, nine times out of ten they're going to come out on top. Yeah. Fan base, stats guy, come here. Get over here, stats guy. Come <laughs> over. Come over. All right, just get you on camera. How are you feeling, fan base? Let's go. Yep. Come on, North. We're going to win the flag. That's, that's all I've got to say. Flag ruse. There we are. Flag ruse. <laughs> Stats guy has his use. How know. good. He's very excited. He's, very, he's a quiet man. He's not of many words, but he loves his kangaroos. He does. That's a life of misery with the men's team, but the dub yep. keeps him happy. Yep. All right, let's get through it. Tipping results from the weekend. Not a bad start. Yeah. Both of us got five. Yeah. Uh, it looked, I was pretty happy with that. It looked dicey on Saturday afternoon mm -hmm. when uh, Essendon got deleted and Gold Coast got smashed. Yeah. I wasn't feeling great. Yeah. So good start. Uh, Spence, I think you got, what, four or five, and Stats Guy got five. So decent start all around. We're all in the lead. Yeah. All right. Full credit. Best team of the round. I'm going Frio. You're going Frio? Yep. You thought they were that impressive? Because Best team of the round. Better than Sydney. Yeah. Better than West Coast. I expected Sydney to win. West Coast won. West Coast more won didn't win the game as much as Richmond lost the game. <laughs> I disagree. Really? And Stats Guy does too. He just gave a little. Yeah, but not a many Stats words. Guy don't know ball. <laughs> I no. I West Coast won that. Man, we talked about Richmond giving away all the 50s and free kicks. Yeah, I mean, they were cooked. They were absolutely cooked. <laughs> but that comes, that's that's a skills error. Yeah. Go, I'm sticking with Freo. All right. Sticking with Freo because I expected them to get smashed and they've come out and smacked Essendon. Yeah. And I saw, I was there to see it. I was like, oh, this is good. This is mm. good footy. How good's mm. footy? How good's footy? Chip's not good. <laughs> so who was your best team then? I'm going to go West Coast. Yep. Yeah, only because... Um, they really did impress me mm -hmm. so much. Um, I thought just the, the amount of improvement, the amount of commitment, um, and just the fun that they were having on the field, their little goal celebrations yeah. and everything like that, they feel like a really tight unit. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with their coach and the culture at the club. Okay. And I'm really excited to see how far they go this year. I like good, mm. good way to wrap up because mm. we've got no bad review this week. We're looking for them, though. So basically <laughs> any idiot who talks down about AFLW or players or something, Brian is going to take the P P155 out of you. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be fun. Without swearing. Yeah, that's, yeah. Which Good is luck. why we don't have one this week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyway, that will do us on AFLW today. For Well, today we will be back later this week on a Thursday. Sarah Lampard's going to be on the show. Excellent. Yeah. Doing my job. Organizing yes. this. <laughs> well great. done. Top stars to you, my friend. Thank you. Alex gets paid to do job. Good stuff. Uh, big thank you to Jess Waterhouse, of course, for coming on the show and shout out to the Adelaide Crows media team for facilitating that as well. But please remember, smash a like across the socials, wherever you see us doing the good stuff. Filling your footy needs. AFLW Today on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, X is AFLW Today AU. AFLW, AFL Today on YouTube. Thumbs up, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. And AFL Today across the podcast networks, wherever you get them. Thanks, Brian. That's quite the mouthful at the end, isn't it? It's hey? a lot. Yeah? Proud of you, that's kid. What, that's why I got to thank you like someone. <sighs> well done. But anyway, that's it. We'll catch you later on in the week for more AFLW today for the round two preview. Look after yourselves and just remember, footy's back. Footy's back.